Good afternoon. I appreciate everyone coming here on short notice this afternoon. Uh, today I have the honor of introducing uh, Columbus's outstanding congresswoman from the uh, Ohio's third district, uh, the Honorable Joyce Beatty. Thank you. Thank you. It is certainly my honor to be here to say a few introductory words about the mayor. It is great to be flanked by family and friends and supporters. Clearly, this legend needs no introduction to you because his accomplishments, boldness in leadership, and love for this city is known to all. But as a colleague and a dear friend, it gives me great pleasure to offer these comments before he speaks. Mayor Coleman, mayors are judged by results. And someone once said, effort and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. Mayor Coleman, a great legend, and as earlier someone in a prayerful way said, he has been a great steward of this city, and his hands are on the steering wheel. Mayor Michael Coleman is a history maker, and not only because of his race and ethnicity, but because of his purpose and direction. You see, in 1999, he became our 52nd mayor and our longest serving mayor. He has spearheaded major programs, initiatives, projects, developed, designed, and revitalized neighborhoods, appointed educational czars, created opportunities for all our children, and provided after school programs, protected the environment retained jobs, leveraged dollars, founded or co-founded some 27 organizations, created initiatives to build Columbus to be the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Big ideas, big challenges, big legacies, because he understands big is not better but better is better. And Michael Coleman has certainly been better. Mayor Coleman, you have built Columbus and you have made its reputation one of the best cities in the nation. We are very proud and you should be very proud. The saying, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today reminds me of a story that the mayor frequently shares. It is the story about two words, two words by Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall that changed the direction in your life, Mayor, when you were still in college and you waited to meet the late Supreme Court Justice to whom you proudly told that you were planning to earn a law degree. So what? asked Justice Marshall. What are you going to do with it? And at that point, Mayor Coleman, you realize that the true measure of life is not determined by who you are or what you are, but rather by what you do and how you help others. So now let me say to you, Mayor Coleman, the two most powerful words we can say. Thank you. Thank you for what you do in helping others Thank you for what you do in helping all of us. We stand here because we are proud to call you mayor, and I am even prouder to call you my friend. Colleagues, family, and friends, a man who needs no introduction, a man who is a great legend and will even leave a greater legacy, my mayor as I fondly and will always say. But today, our mayor, join me with a rousing applause for Mayor 
Michael B. Coleman. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Congresswoman. With all that, I think I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> I'm not done. No, thank you so much for that. Um, good afternoon. In November of 1999, the voters of this great city hired me for the best job in the world. I am eternally grateful and humbled by the trust they put in me and by the opportunity they gave me. Serving as your mayor has filled me with pride and tremendous joy. Playing a part in the transformation of this great city has been an honor and a privilege. When my first, fourth term expires at the end of next year, it will be my final term as mayor. This is among the most difficult decisions I have ever made. The city of Columbus <clears throat> the city of Columbus has become a part of who I am. It is in my blood, and I love the city of Columbus. I love the residents of Columbus, and I love being mayor of Columbus. So I can barely say these words, I will not be running for a fifth term. I struggled mightily over whether I should seek a fifth term. I was encouraged by the people of our city. I was developing a fifth term agenda, but something happened along the way. One week ago, I turned 60 years old. <laughs> And this milestone in my life did not make me feel old at all, because we all know that 60 is a new 40. <laughs> but it did force me to think about my future for a change. That there is so much more in life yet to do. It's mountains to climb and rivers to cross. In almost 23 years of public life, I've served as a city council member and for the past 16 years, mayor of the greatest city in the world. Prior to that, I worked as a legislative aide and as an attorney. I was 44 when I was elected mayor. I'll be 61 at the end of my term. I feel great and I have a lot of energy and a whole lot of new ideas. But it's time to venture into new frontiers. And if I'm going to do something new before I reach retirement age, at the age of 85, <laughs> I probably need to do it at the end of this term rather than five years from now. And though I have not reached every goal or completed every project, we are at a point where I am extremely proud of the city we have become. Serving as your mayor has been an incredibly fulfilling journey. I have led this city through the best and the worst of times, through economic crises and now in a renaissance. I have promoted, I have advocated, I have fought for Columbus. I have wept and I have struggled for Columbus. I have had sleepless nights and joyous days. I have managed and directed the business of this city. But most of all, I dreamed what Columbus could be and worked to achieve it. And as I loved every minute of this, even in our most difficult times, one thing is for sure, I have done my best and work my hardest to make this city great. 
I will let history judge my tenure. Just know that while I will no longer be mayor in 13 months, I am not yet done contributing, contributing to the life and to the swagger of the city of Columbus. We still have more work to do. And while I am not certain what I'll do next, there will be a next. I want to acknowledge that I have the best cabinet, the best staff, and the best employees of any mayor in this nation. They serve our residents with integrity and ingenuity. I thank all of them for their service to me and to our city. I have the best kids any dad in the nation could ever have. Kimberly, who's in Chicago, Justin, who is here, right there, and JD, who is in North Carolina right now, I'm so proud of each of them. Having a mayor for a father is not an easy thing. <clears throat> My family has gone through a lot and sacrificed a great deal for me. <clears throat> and I want to thank Janelle for her love and support in my entire family and my friends who are all here today, just a few of them, <laughs> all I could reach this morning, <laughs> uh, for being there for me over uh, the past many, many years. We have the best residents of any city in the nation, and we have more to do together. I have another 13 months left on my term, and I don't intend to spend them looking through old photo albums. My intention is to continue working to improve the lives of residents as I have for the past 15 years. And I intend on focusing on getting this city convention ready and raising the resources for the convention without the distraction of a political campaign. I want to thank all our residents for giving me this great honor and for making Columbus the best city in the nation to live, to work, and to raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, go back to work. <laughs>